December, the American Society of Civil Engineers, which is 150,000 civil engineers, a uh, fairly conservative group, so I didn't have much hope for this, but uh, they had this contest, an innovation contest, uh, for every, actually it wasn't even limited to members. And uh, one of the categories was um, sustainable resilience or something to that effect. So I figured, okay, well, I can write ocean forests into a big picture resilience via ocean forests. And we won. We won the whole contest, the best overall thing. They had like four different categories, and this was the judge the best of all the entries. And uh, so they flew us back to Washington, D.C., and giving this presentation was uh, Jason Zhang, who is our um, uh, about 30-year-old guy, engineer, who works with the Los Angeles County of Public Works in, in flood control stuff and uh, myself and uh, G Dr. Jim Stewart, um, uh, the, the two older guys. And so we started with the younger guy. <laughs> and so uh, Jason, during this part, um, he uh, said something to the effect like, um, which is true for me too, and I encourage him to say this, uh, I got into civil engineering because I wanted to make a difference. And I looked at this ocean forest stuff and it was making a difference. So. That's why I'm here. Now, our presentation, we're going to go through um, uh, you know, what, the, what the global issues are, part of the big picture, and, and the global solutions, and how the, uh, you may not realize this, but the coastal water is changing. The chemistry is changing. Um, and, I'm, and actually, yeah, I like to break things up, so we had a question so far for everybody. Uh, and then we did a resource recovery infrastructure because it turns out you can't do this ocean forestry stuff unless you can recover all the nutrients. And then it'd be also be a good idea if you can recover all the metals and other stuff. So complete resource recovery is going to be important. And then finally, we get into uh, carbon storage infrastructure. Uh, there's global issues having to do with water and, and other things, too. Um, uh, the, the biggest one locally here, uh, California, is uh, experiencing coastal ocean acidification, uh, more so than a lot of other locations, because the uh, deep water that upwells already has a little lower pH, a little more acidification in the deep water. And then because the uh, air has more carbon dioxide in it, um, the pH doesn't rise again when the deep water comes up like it used to. So uh, acidification, um, asphyxiation has to do with a couple of things. One is uh, if you have an algae bloom, uh, you're fine as long as the algae are alive, but when the algae die, uh, the bacteria that eat the algae suck up all the oxygen. And the other thing is that when water's warmer, it holds less dissolved oxygen. So it's hypoxia, and, and California just put out a big study, took them three years to tell us this stuff. You can get the report, I, if you know, let me know. Tell you where to get the report. Um, coral bleaching, uh, ocean dead zones, um, uh, you know, occasional bits of trash. Um, we're running out of water, and this actually refers to um, uh, drinking fresh water, but we'll get to why that's related here and in two ways uh, and, and floods. And I forgot what these are. Oh, 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 I'll get to that. Um, so anyway, we have these global issues and potential solutions. Okay, so this is uh, Jim Stewart talking, and Jim Stewart says, gee, I was really depressed until I found Mark. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he says that because um, we grow a whole lot of seaweed and it addresses everything pretty nicely. It's, it's just mind-boggling how growing seaweed addresses all this stuff. You grow seaweed, the growing seaweed does the photosynthesis thing and sucks the carbon dioxide out of the water. You know, just like uh, trees on, in the air suck carbon dioxide out of the air. And if you suck the carbon dioxide out of the water, well then more carbon dioxide will come from the air, but, but at least you're, you're, you're sucking down the carbon dioxide and increasing the pH because the dissolved carbon dioxide is what is lowering the pH. So seaweed removes CO2, um, if you remove CO2, you can restore the climate. And 
know if you guys are paying much attention to, everybody's talking about we've got this increasing carbon dioxide emission thing going on, and we're going to be lucky to level it off. And then people talk about, okay, and then after we level it off sometime in the future, we'll reduce the emissions. Meanwhile, the total carbon dioxide in the air is still increasing. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so I uh, grow seaweed. Um, the seaweed can be your biofuel. You can use the seaweed. We can grow enough seaweed in a sustainable way to completely replace fossil fuels. Wow. Um, oh, while you're doing it, uh, you, you suck all the nutrients out of the water in places where there's too much nutrients. That's what causes ocean dead zones, so you fix that. Um, oh, hey, your corals, I mean your coral, your uh, uh, seaweed that are growing, it's pumping oxygen into the water. So instead of having the asphyxiation issue, either because it's warm or because of dead algae um, or dead fish, um, you've got more oxygen in the water by the seaweed. Um, oh, and of course you can eat the seaweed and feed everybody. And it turns out that uh, if, you, if you address the fossil fuel, if you address the fuel issue, um, you just kind of nibble on a little bit of seaweed and you feed everybody in the world with no problem because, because our energy demand is so big. Um, any cool ocean water, uh, you can restore ocean coral reefs actually a couple different ways. We found some more ways besides just cooling them off. Um, as we were preparing the presentation, uh, one of the authors, Mohammed Hassan, he's a, a immigrant, we're talking, or four decades ago, from Bangladesh. He came over here, got his uh, degrees, and he's a civil engineer, like me. And, and he sent me this little, uh, uh, little documentary on what's happening in Bangladesh with sea level rise already. And there's a, you know, a couple million people, and they're, they're trying to cross the fences into India, and, and India has way more stuff on their border um, than we have on the borders of Mexico uh, in terms of shooting people trying to cross into India. Um, and of course, you've got all kinds of issues because Bangladesh is mostly Muslim and India is mostly Hindu. Um, so you've got this migration going on. And you'll notice that my arrows, which represent people migrating, look like they're going the wrong direction. People are <coughs> migrating to the land, right? Well, that's because what I am telling you here is we don't want to do that. Do not retreat. All the jobs, there's going to be piles of jobs growing a whole bunch of seaweed in the coastal ocean. So we need to figure out how to stay there and maybe even go out, even though the water is rising around us, we're going to float over the top of it, because that's where the jobs are. People want to be close to their jobs. The best place to do this first would be uh, uh, Bangladesh, but they might want to have a sister state with Florida. <laughs> Great info there. Um, okay, so uh, part of our, our, our kind of, part of the whole uh, big picture resilience is coastal infrastructure. And you can raise our coastal land with mangrove forests. Um, and people are doing this. You, you grow a whole bunch of mangroves. Um, now, I haven't seen people quite do this, but the way I think we need to be doing it in the future, you set aside uh, half the land to grow a whole bunch of mangroves, uh, and you live over here and for like 10 or 20 years. And then you flatten the mangroves, because that's your land now, and you grow more land, and, and you move over on top of the flattened mangroves. And then you uh, grow a whole bunch of mangroves over here, and so you keep going back and forth as the mangroves keep raising you up. So that's that's... Uh, people are growing the mangroves, they just haven't got to the part where they flatten them and live on top of them. And, yeah. Uh, but we'll get there. Um, you do things to make sure that the coral survive. You need your coral reef ecosystem because that's your frontage breakwater. Um, if, if you don't, if the coral doesn't grow fast enough, then the waves get all the way into where you're at, and the waves really flatten you out fast. If you got the coral reef, the waves break out on the reef and at least you can float on top of gently, you know, what the, the 
water level rising. It's hard to float on top of waves breaking on top of it. Here's another example of a, a seagrass dune. And um, this little more exotic uh, movable breakwater, you would have this, this breakwater uh, down when your surfers wanted to surf on the beach. And then whenever the surf waves are getting too big, you raise the whole thing. And, and this scale is um, uh, a couple hundred meters this way. And this might be uh, you know, 10 to 30 meters this way. And, and the shore is way the heck over here. Um, and so the, the basic concept is a part of the whole ocean force thing is coastal infrastructure all integrated with growing seaweed. You know, these are not just done by themselves. Uh, they're integrated with the other things you're doing. Growing seaweed. This is a picture of a Chinese seaweed farm in the middle. Um, that's a <coughs> floating structure in, uh, I believe it's Kenya, in a river. But they, they were planting a whole bunch of floating structures like that. And of course, you can do offshore wind, offshore wave, uh, another uh, floating store. <coughs> um, you might have seen this. This is something the, uh, uh, one of those uh, Middle East countries, I don't think there's one now. Dubai, Dubai, Kuwait, yeah. Um, so you, you, so people, at least in this case and these cases, they're already thinking of, gee, I want to stay here. The level rise, I want to, I want to stay here. Because it's, it's nice, you know. People like the coast. It's a little cooler. Um, robotics. Uh, when, when we do our seaweed forest, we need to take advantage of, uh, you know, initially you're doing it in a third world country and people are doing stuff. Well, it's actually kind of dangerous to be out on the water all the time and in the water and doing stuff, relatively speaking, if you're an uh, employer of a whole bunch of people working, <laughs> you'd rather have robots. <coughs> this was in uh, Scientific American. Some Australian researchers had